So I represent a company named AGC, which is into consulting. We do global consulting for uh, various domains, uh, defense, banking, and many cross domains, sales and distribution. So past couple of years, like more than five plus years, we've been working. Um, and if you can just check on my LinkedIn, my profile is in open. So you will find all my details, my credentials, what I work with, and which all clients have got testimonials for me. Everything is online. Okay, I've plus have clients across the globe, US, India, Africa, China, uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Canada, Singapore, Thailand, and Malaysia. So you can just check on my LinkedIn and you can connect there. And uh, these are my credentials uh, with, with the companies which I work with and like a system integrator. And my qualification basically lies as a management consultant. Like I did my master's in computer applications from Mumbai, then a project manager from IIT Delhi, then did my management development programs and around 40, plus certifications across and now in one of the magazines have been listed as top 10 CEOs to watch in 2022 all because just by the love of students and uh, con companies across they have just started connecting me yeah and uh, we are working on a lot many projects okay that's in a nutshell about me so this is our expertise i'll just quickly go through what we are going to uh, go ahead with today this is how we start what is data? Where does it come from? With and without data, how do we properly define data? Understanding big data and data of transformation. Coining the term data science, now how to become a data scientist and overview of blockchain and the use case, like we'll take up two use case. One is FinTech and the other one is a supply chain uh, use case with blockchain. Okay, so if we start off with this, we have seen, we have heard all these buzzwords, uh, data mining, big data, analytics, are these buzzwords or uh, is it like uh, hitting hard? Like we are not, we are in the age of information overload, right? So data, data science, analytics, these are too much confusing thing for any layman. So since we, in today's scenario, we're just addressing a couple of um, queries, like we more, we may not, we may not go into depth of it, but at least give an overview what exactly it goes around and what, how you can leverage the session today. Okay, as I previously mentioned, we will just go ahead with understanding the basics first, what is data? uh and we will actually go ahead with other sessions in upcoming uh, month as well which deep dives into hands-on working on blockchain okay since i have a work experience with uh, fintech so i'll just take away take those case studies and share it share it live in front of you in upcoming session okay so today we are starting out with basics so what is data what is data science and analytics okay so you should have a a rough idea of what this is because in today's world information we can easily get through just by search engine right we can just go ahead or uh, by just one click of button we can get most most of the details okay now let's let's go further so is data a hype a fad or is it like a new information technology trend or new management philosophy or is it just a challenge or uh, or is it an opportunity so it all depends on how we take it okay it all actually it all depends on how we take it a uh, data is everywhere actually the moment you log in the moment i log in online we have been like we are making data points the moment you switch on your mobile phone you're making data points like your location tracker is on okay so it's not a hype or it's not a fat data is the new oil and people are tracking vendors are tracking you based on your usage uh, they post the right kind of advertisements so data is the most absolute necessary thing in the world now and it's a high opportunity thing that's why facebook and google all are flourishing like anything 
and to understand how to make best use of it uh, is what we need to learn very fast okay gone are the days when we just had excel just an excel with uh, say 5 10 000 rows columns and all we used to manage it easily but uh, with as the things are progressing it is changing okay we are not able to manage with just excel there's a lot of database coming in so it's a necessity for today's organization to learn about more about data okay then this is one of a very senior scientist actually this is mr edwards deming okay he is uh, was he, like he was a american engineer he, we lost him in uh, december 1993 okay he's a statistician he's a professor author a lecturer okay and he's a management consultant basically he is an electric engineer and later on specialized in mathematical physics yes helped to develop a lot of sampling techniques now the best he is best known for his plan do study act cycle okay and total quality management as well he is also called, named as the data scientist okay and like there are many credits and other awards been given to him due to his exclusive work on quality control so popularly what deming says that in god we trust all others bring data okay so popularly known as what you measure you manage now this is this quote is from demings okay and the importance of measuring and testing to predict typical results is what he used to look forward okay so whenever you try to uh, analyze things or whenever you think of quality management you just think about mr edwards deming okay so without data you are just another person with an opinion so you have an opinion then you need to have the right data with you okay let it be politics let it be climate control let it be COVID. anything any uh, thing in the world you just need to have the right data to speak about it okay you can't speak without the correct data else nobody will take you for uh, nobody will take you seriously that's way. okay and now this is why we have built so much data we have like you man in general is highly curious like he's a curious animal since the dawn of civilization right from finding the trade routes to current birth of cryptocurrency with blockchain right uh, he or she will be inquisitive to identify the data the opportunity what it is so if i want to get into i want to talk about blockchain blockchain is like a fascinating data structure that generates great curiosity in computer science okay the social or the political sciences or the public policies but there's a lot of hype around the concept and its adoption in diverse fields seems to be a faith based or uh, driven by unsubstantial vendor or a consultant claim right this is like very much unpredictable okay now this both confusing and risky now perhaps from inadequate understanding of blockchain properties maybe yeah as well as imprecise articulation of application requirement like we don't know what to use because there is every next day you can find new uh, coins been coming up dodge coins or bitcoins and all okay so you need to understand more about blockchain by reading the basics first understanding it and then jump into actual um, say trading or uh, maybe if you are interested in coding you should go ahead with coding as well okay so before we go ahead we will learn some more about the basics and then we'll move ahead okay now if you check on google the first thing what you'll check do is like you check what is data okay you can see data is the quantities or characters or symbols on which operations are performed by a computer which may be stored and transmitted in form of electrical signals according to magnetic optical or mechanical recording media now this is a definition which we normally receive from google okay now there's a data example as well like data is the name given to a facts and entities such as uh, names numbers so if it's my name is amit ashokan so we have a unique identity right okay now there is other uh, examples of data as well like 
a number of items, employee names like product names, address, text codes, images, sounds, animated uh, data, the many things. These are some of the example of uh, data. Okay, so before we move ahead we should understand that what these data belongs like uh, if you are a coder you'll understand that string what is string what is numeric integer um, that kind of like how is the variables are defined what kind of data uh, is stored in which types and um, because now i'm just taking a bit out of uh, the way out of the syllabus because i want to uh, tell you that uh, saving these data is also quite expensive okay so that's why we have the right data types as well okay. the place where we just need to put in zeros and ones if we allocate a eight digit or a eight slot track it won't help us out so we just need two bytes for storing binary so we can allocate or we can predefine the locations in advance okay so this is the definition of data let's move ahead and understand what exactly we are going to do ahead with organizational implications one second i'll just yeah yeah now organizational implications if you see yeah so as I said, data is everywhere. Data is an important attribute, say, uh, the organization, the people, processes, technology must be considered. Now, lack of understanding data and what it takes to properly leverage data often leads to failure, failed digital transformations. So data is everywhere. The data is an important attribute. The organization, people, process must be considered very true. Okay. And if you, if an individual doesn't understand data properly, they, they can't leverage it to the next level okay so if you want to check out on relational database so you will make use of a sql data a sql uh, application or if you want to see non-relational database is like uh, which is of videos and audio you'll go for non-relational database i'll come to it but just to make a gist of for your like for your understanding you need to have a proper understanding of data and how to make proper leverage of it Okay, else data transformation would be very difficult. So where does this data come from? The data can come from any place, right? And as I said right now, the moment you pick up your phone, okay, you uh, have this location tracker on, on the base antenna, like your mobile phone just connects to the cell tower, right? So data can come from anywhere okay by the time you make a move from one place to another place the tower picks up depending on the range and it changes the towers right change towers and you can have uninterrupted voice call right that is what any company would like to give you yeah so data comes from anywhere it can be web blogs, it can be GPS systems, it can be business transaction, internet-based text documents, internet search. Right now, if I search for something immediately, Google will post an ad similar to what we are searching for, right? Okay. Even for a Amazon-like company, if you are trying to search out something or you put something on the cart, and two or three days later, if you're still not buying that object, or the thing or the item they'll put a post across on your email automatically okay this all is just because the data is they have your data like your search updated and the surveillance surveillance is on and they're doing automated uh, mails so that you are intended to buy that product as early as possible so they also create a fomo okay fear of missing out the suddenly prices are lowered or like say five to ten rupees is lowered if it is 410 they'll say it is available for 399 so that kind of fomo uh, helps the companies to sell off products at the, a faster rate and they can make the faster as well 
So you can see from the diagram, you have the business process, ERP, SCRM, SCM at the lower end, and you get all kinds of machine sensors, which creates a lot of data, right from your digital meters, barcodes, sensors on airplanes, sensor on trains, on machines, everything generates data. Yeah, they just create this big bank on, uh, and it's an ongoing process. Right now, when we are talking, when I'm talking, uh, recording this lecture, uh, whatever I'm sharing has been recorded, it's been stored on the cloud. And you also are actually having that recipient part coming in, like you are actually making multimedia archives out of it. Some may be recording it on their desktop, yeah? So this is where data comes from, and this is what we need to conclude out of uh, what data is and how we are going to use this. Okay, now main part is definition of big data. Okay, uh, as I said, uh, data is growing like anything. Data is the new oil, okay? And there are different things from different backgrounds. Data is stored like right from sensors to mobile phones. Data is getting assimilated and stored, right? So traditionally big data is massive volumes of data. That volume of data like NASA's uh, satellite images, Google search um, optimizing, queries or spiders, search spiders. Nowadays, the volume is just one dimension that makes big data popular, valuable, or challenging, okay? So underlying proposition of big data is the same as one proposed by analytics, okay? So big data equal to big data analytics equal to better decisions, okay? So the more samples you have, the better decisions you can make, okay? So if somebody is from a chemical background, they do multiple testing right on their products so the more number of uh, tests are done many like you, you can take a sampling data like that can make better decisions okay or say a student who is studying for his exam he can just try to check out as a week how he is trying to study just one week of observation and check out whether he will be able to complete the whole syllabus in next two months or one month whatever goals he has been putting ahead with okay so more the data better data analytics can be worked out better decisions can be done okay so big data means different things of uh, things to people from different backgrounds and interests but ultimately it remains the same that you can make better decisions with greater data sets okay you can average out things faster now current different definition of data we have that uh, big data is inaccurate term they say uh, it can be like stated as big data is more than just big there are many we is defined for big data it is volume variety volatility now all these are quite terminologies which is there is more than this three v's there are around six to eight v's okay so we'll just focus on this three what does variety means because we have different data formats data semantics and structures okay now why i'm talking more about data is because we under when we understand data properly where to use which data which kind of storage this just can be done by analyzing data so as i rightly pointed out in the first part uh, on relational and non-relational data those from my it background will exactly understand what i'm talking about okay so if it is in rows and columns a very structured format it would be great to use a relational database if it is semi-structured or unstructured they can go for non-relational database <clears throat> okay now when we talk about big data there are different data formats that is variety uh, we have data semantics we have data structures defined now variety is geared towards different techniques to resolve and manage data variety such as indexing techniques or relating data with different or incompatible types so you want to twist like change the data type like from if it is a string you want to convert into integer okay or say data profiling to find interrelationship and abnormalities between data source okay so 
source and destination data source or data mapping may be different now you see in some countries they follow the format of dd mm yy yy that's a date field okay in some other countries they follow mm dd yy yy only the month and the date part is interchanged okay now depends but just if that structure is not mapped properly it will be leading to a chaos when they try like say if we have shelf life for food products say it is lasting for only five days and if it the date range is different say month month and year date range is different it will be a chaos for the organization okay so data profiling interrelationship and abnormality between data sources should be rightly checked out that is because we have variety of data then important data to universally accepted and usable format the important actually what you need to do is that whatever data you want to have a universal acceptance you can import the data into uh, use international standard format like example like we can make use of xml extensible markup language you have custom xml with you you can make use of that and uh, it is much easier to transfer using xml formats okay then metadata management to achieve contextual text consistency this also you can work out with variety of data okay next comes the part of the, that is the first point which i could say is volume the amount of data stored and managed by organization the amount of data stored has a significant impact on the scalability and accessibility and manageability so the more the data uh, there may be a challenge with managing the data yeah so they can divide it into like just like what we do for income tax like we file yearly returns instead of three year four year returns together so that makes sense right it can be easily managed so similarly you can do for uh, your backups monthly backup weekly backup daily backup or yearly backup okay you can define the manageability properly okay then comes data volatility so volatility is often used to determine how long the data should be stored right so this just giving an example like how long do we store old newspaper at home we don't store it for a long time right we store it just for uh, say a month if it is something is important we can save it somewhere right keep it uh, in some specific place but we often determine like say once it is like the moment it piles up for a month we just give it back to recycling guy right so this is similar for our data as well like we have we may be finding a lot of temp files in your computer there are a lot of documents in your computer the law that maybe like if you are watch, interested in watching movies a lot of movies so if you just keep on piling that movies your data will be full right similar kind of things happen with corporates as well so taking backup of this data how long the data should be stored is also very important it can reflect how data changes data can rarely change actually it can be managed differently okay so government regulation business rules can often dictate how long the data can be kept so banks have some regulation where it, the data should need to be kept for so and so period and when it must be deleted or whether it should be kept forever okay so we have billions of records for all um, all the clients across the globe like say we have say sbi has 2 million um, accounts so keeping 2 million passbook entries 2 million passbook entries of every individual must be having a lot of entries that will be highly complicated for them right so uh, even if you just try out in your uh, online portal how far you can take a report online okay just check it out that would be a great exercise uh, you can try it today okay now we spoke about uh, the, how the big data is defined by volume variety or volatility now are this important are these are equally challenging and equally important as well because we can't keep data for long on different machines or we need to check out the volatility we need to check out the volume the variety everything okay we can't keep all data in one space 
depending on the volume okay so these are equally important now just a fun way to analyze now this two guys are mutually discussing with them, each other right do we have any actionable analytics from our big data in the cloud now the other guy says yes the data shows that my productivity plunks whenever you learn new jargon okay so understanding new terminologies is also a challenge for every individual okay earlier uh, it was we used to use cloud long time back like gmail was there already then cloud computing became a hype like it was like everything went on cloud right uh, and there was a challenge with people accepting things on cloud right but i i've seen uh, government agencies actually they had email ids which was on cloud say gmail id they were using all their confidential document they were sharing it on cloud okay so just for our understanding we need to understand the technology very well before we implement okay so uh, there are cases with companies uh, wherein when they try to share work related projects work related communications across on their personal whatsapp or mobile phones uh, they have actually breached their uh, contract or ndas okay just because it was not mentioned they have to actually uh, share details through their official mail only okay so you need to understand the right way to access data the right way to share data okay so maybe in memory computing will accelerate your application that is you need to understand the terminologies as well okay every terminology you try to check out online just go through it once you'll be able to uh, identify details of that very easily okay now going back to the next part data science okay now comes the part of data science because we have been checking out the fun way of working with data and all now what is data science now if you check wiki okay data science is a interdisciplinary field that uses scientific methods processes algorithms systems to attract, extract knowledge and insights from noisy structured and unstructured data and apply knowledge and actionable insights from data across a broad range of application domains okay now you see uh, here in this diagram it's self explanatory it is uh, from the source by palmer shelley a data science for c suits okay now uh, here you can see it is a interdisciplinary field right uh, you have mathematics computer science and domain expertise coming together wherein the statistical research overlaps like it's a part of domain experts and mathematics data processing is a part of domain expertise and computer science and mathematics and computer science is a part of machine learning so all this clubbing together comes to data science okay now mainly everything starts with data so that's the reason i started out with data in the first place okay now data science encompasses preparing data for analysis including cleaning cleansing aggregating manipulating all the like all the tracks right right from what to perform whether you want to perform advanced analysis whether you want to work with analytical application here what happens is data scientist can review these results very easily to uncover the patterns and enable business leaders to actually draw informed insights okay so ceo of a company if they want to get a drill down approach say or a head of the department of a large banking organization want to see how their particular branch is doing if they you share a a hundred pager excel it will be chaos for him to analyze he won't able to draw out like he can't actually take out insights very easily but if you analyze but that is what is done by data scientists like guys like me we actually analyze we uncover the patterns we enable the business leaders to draw informed insights by using different tools maybe it may be sap business intelligence bi bio, bio or any any tool maybe saas or microsoft power bi so that is where we as data scientists come into picture okay and uh, 
as i said i gave you example of uh, bank right so you get customer data you have the kyc you get want to have check casa versus total deposit or you want to aggregate you want to do abdominal analysis everything can be made everything can be done through application of data science okay now uh, in use case model if i want to share most of the company use this in the field of risk management and its analysis so if you somebody is giving a credit card or a loan online like they just check out their previous history credit history whether they have dealt with this company earlier how was the behavior for a particular bank okay it is also used for managing customer portfolio for like uh, trend analysis so there is a huge a trend going on for uh, um, like online studies right uh, like if they want to study abroad they take a loan right so it's all based on the portfolio okay now in this case like for trend analysis it uses business intelligence tools like we use actually those tools to analyze there are some breathtaking applications in data science that support financial sector in data analysis now the best example that's the best example in data sci uh, science i can share right with you okay now also there is a main important thing which uh, i would like to share is fraud detection fraud detection is the most critical part for any financial industry okay in this area the data science and the uh, artificial intelligence along with machine learning are of all like often used together like even small malfunctions and glitches may lead to financial losses right okay real time predictive analytics helps in enhancement of fraud detection as well so there is cyber security also club together now with the help of this data science tools companies are providing their financial services effectively okay the technology helps them to identify potential fraud transaction and Hell, like they can just hold on, just like what we had. Lot of cases like uh, big short uh, fraud happening in our Indian uh, banking system, so that could have or been stalled. Okay, because uh, this application raises a trigger every time an activity is carried out. Okay, it helps to block the session in case of detection of an unusual financial activity. You must have seen, like in case your yeah, credit card, you try to purchase anything about two thousand, automatic uh, OTP is generated. The credit card company calls you up, okay, to check out whether did you do the transaction, or if it is in dollars or in euros, or uh, did you do that transaction just to check out because they get a trigger immediately. Just because what happens is this guy days we have um unusual tracking sites whenever you type to try to put in your uh, credit card number uh, the the uh, expiry date and all if it you are using a cyber cafe or any unsecured place they the details are just tabbed in okay but things are changing slowly okay otp has been uh taken care like so that you can uh, have seamless experience with the security but still that can also be uh, challenged because mobile sims are also been cloned these days okay now there is one more case study i want to share that's the best example is data management like management managing like as i said earlier enormous data is challenging for any financial institutes or any financial specialist as well okay he receives large amount of data from various sources so a bank may have multiple applications 10 different application oracle sap sas and all so most of the data like kyc they have photographs and all like we have voice um, recordings as well digitized so most of this data is unstructured now digitizing document may resolve the issue somehow but it is up to some extent only okay so here also we use the right tools in data science like machine learning we use data processing tools statistical research tools to collaborate concise this data digitize it and keep it in a repository and which can be accessed next time when needed okay now this is all about data science now we'll move ahead and we'll talk about 
data science is a new term but in the same sense as columbus was discovered new continent thousand years ago which is stated by hector it's a copyright this is a professor from department of computer science from stanford okay so data science we just have to understand how this science works okay is a must read and uh, here is that this was actually uh, this act about uh, jim gary's last talk of to the computer science and telecom board on january 2007 okay now he proposed that years that establishment of modern stores for data and documents uh, needs to be done as early as possible okay because data capture data analysis everything needs to be done uh, quite fast his vision was very clear okay data will be in new oil it was done in 2007 so i would recommend all the candidates all the participants over here please read through this this is a great book to go ahead with okay it's about intensive scientific discovery i can share this link on the chat window as well uh, once we are through with our session i'll just copy this and share it on the chat window yeah and uh, next uh, treat data as an asset okay business are collecting more data than they know what to do with them right uh, as i said earlier as well and everybody knows these days that um, data is the new oil uh, gold actually data is the oil actually uh, more competitive than gold uh, so every candidate every person these days needs to upskill themselves so we as data scientists we have uh, we as uh, consultants we train banks upper management senior management on acquiring those skills okay so as i just shared a use case right the upi thing which has come up immediately you can transfer money in a just a jiffy right you don't have to sit stay in the line uh, exchange cash from the cash collector and give it off to uh, to a vendor they just have qr code you just scan it it transfer happens online so there is a lean thing coming up with branches as well slowly you won't find atms in different places because uh, keeping an atm is actually a capex it's a co cost for the bank okay keeping a atm cooling uh, thing lot of things to a security uh, the logistics filling cash maintenance everything comes into place okay so but just with your mobile phone just uh, with an app they are able to like any customer is able to transfer money on the go right so upskilling so uh, bank candidates who work in bank or uh, yeah employees those who work in bank need to upskill faster that is what i wanted to share here okay so and they need to understand the new management style as well how it works okay so data and emerging technology adoption this was 2020 growth now it's almost 2 years now now this growth has trajected to the next level during covid it has gone to such an extent let it be anything like right from upi or uh, during that note bandi thing or maybe online classes you see the data trajectory is going like anything okay analytics you see most of the growth most respondents reporting disappointing results with related to in hand like keeping uh, like failing short of expectation like there is like keeping data in one position it's on cloud so there is advanced analytics which is getting major growth data visualization tools which is actually expelling like it's outbound actually it's like uh, just sitting at one um, hq you can get the data data insights of branches across india okay one one of the public sector uh, banks which i work with we were in the hq in delhi and we were able to extract data across all all uh, it's it's a it was we were consultants to them so we were able to actually share those metrics with the higher management okay so data and emerging to technology adoption is going very fast so uh, i would recommend just refer to hackett group uh, check out roi on payback or cycle improvement time this is just for our observation right now so the growth trajectory was 20% now it is extended to more 
but i'm not able to share the real time thing right now because of uh, the copyright thing okay so uh, i've just shared 2019 sample data over here okay and why so many high profile digital transformation fail you should also know this because converting data from one form to another is a very tricky task okay so it's not like plug and play you take out uh, non relational database and put it to relational database it doesn't happen there are a lot of things going on in so there's a lot of extraction transformation and load happening inside or elt etl a um, lot of coding and transformation which needs to be done there can be a batch wise processing or an immediate processing depends it all depends right uh, though digital is not just a thing you can buy and plug into organization it's just not just a technology it's an ongoing process changing the way you do business so today if you if a bank wants to digitize completely they won't go for all branches across in one go it is taken as a phase wise approach so they'll do a pilot for one branch one area or one district or one state and they slowly upscale that team as well so as i said um, we were doing consulting for largest public sector bank uh, in india so uh, that required foundation investment in skills so we did upskill their we shared knowledge we upskill their existing um, team okay the lot of things we had to do okay that requires mixing people machines business process with all the messiness which requires continuous monitoring from the top and ensure both digital leaders and non digital leaders are making good decisions okay apart from this the data is hard transformation is harder we have to understand that and you need to have the right skill set so what are the skill set needed to be a data scientist they need to know basics of max programming data management visualization they should able to visualize data okay uh, they if they have full stack experience okay full stack coding full stack like database uh, uh, front end back end it would be uh, add on so 80% of the work goes into preparing the data for processing in an industry setting okay so data should be in the right format okay and there are a lot of technical skills i think if you google it out you will find mathematics programming data visualization deep learning machine learning name it acquire those skills and you can be a data scientist as early as possible take up some projects so it can be a daily daily project small small task of programming and a weekly project a monthly project that way you can learn things very fast so now let's go to blockchain what is blockchain now we have just have limited time so i'll just won't uh, try to extend it far okay so blockchain i'll just give you a gist blockchain is a revolution in the systems of record it has much more to do than just cryptocurrencies because of its flexible nature it can be applied to any activity that requires database and can tackle data management issues especially around privacy or security or blockchain software brings like there are a lot of tools which follows and it's a fast growing thing actually if you have a blockchain skill set no now just leaving behind all those earlier things like tensorflow and machine learning if you are a blockchain developer it could be much better so there is a great demand for developers of block <clears throat> sorry of blockchain so uh, it's hydra chain or ethereum coders are in demand so uh, i think i won't able to dig deep into this right now because uh, we'll be off shooting our um, time timeline i'll just go to the next so you can just check for the you know, hyperledger hyperledger which is very uh, great it's a non profit organization which brings out all the necessary resource and infrastructure that ensures uh, the stable ecosystem around open source software blockchain projects so if you have a good understanding about blockchain if you want to have a good understanding you can go to hyperledger.com uh, online this hyperledger fabric fabric uh, is which is the cornerstone of hyperledger projects you can just check out the linux foundation and uh, it's a permission based blockchain which is more accurate and it's a distributed ledger technology a dlt which you can work 
out with um, like multiple projects it's not just finance it you can use it for supply chain you can use it for many other dynamics as well okay as you know in traditional supply chain the information about entity of the food entity is not fully transparent right we don't know where exactly this food is coming from right so here the tracking of uh, food manufacturer the wholesalers logistics retailer and which comes to the consumer is a tedious task so at every chain every stage the chain introduce potential security there is a potential security vulnerabilities the integration issues are there then there is inefficiency issues so there we can use make use of blockchain the main growing threat in current food supply chain remains the counterfeit food and food fraud happening there are a lot of counterfeit food or like they may take it from local thing local plant or and take it name label it as hydroponic and sell it at a higher higher rate okay just giving a gist i'm just want to uh, so cut short on the timeline so here uh, blockchain will be highly uh, helpful okay so that is one part of it uh, now if you check out hyper ledger project you will find some exciting uh supply chain food supply chain examples as well now second we have a uh, okay second we have a use case which is we trade like how we trade helps business grow with digitally smart contracts powered by hyperledger fabric now those very interested with finance uh, Uh, bfsi banking financial services and insurance they should actually see this case study now smes have two options of issuing automatic payments on the we trade platform so one is exchange of invoice sent by the seller to the buyer now other is adding confirmation of delivery which is done through third party transporter for which an api and a separate interface was developed now you can check this out because it includes features like automatic transaction settlements bank guarantees finance to encourage that is financial trust which is easier for trade relationship between members so you should definitely check this on hyperledger go online check it out check this use case you will simply love it okay so now the we trade is just a plug and play thing and you can use it for a lot of other you know opportunities as well like a lot of other financial projects as well understand the case study very well okay so just moving ahead uh, yeah i'll just take a minute more so we have some 100% case studies we have mentors to bits pilani mba fintech uh, we have done great moments with i am kori code okay and we do consult indian navy on projects and all uh, we do projects with uh, 91 spring board uh we meet at anti uh, mumbai and we are consulting team for team bipro we have done that for punjab national bank uh there are some great testimonials you can check it online uh, you can connect to me uh, if required i think many would be very much interested to uh, how to become a data scientist they may be interested to know how to become a data scientist so it involves just checking out skills out upgrading yourself start with excel learn about small coding vba coding uh, that will improve your interest uh, to work out with other programming language how to manage data uh, if you have a cloud account maybe portal dot azure dot com go to azure uh, microsoft cloud platform you can check out different database online uh, there are a lot of learning platforms available these days it's for free and 
you can start out with basics okay that's the beauty of uh, learning now it's no way hidden uh, trend these days like data learning is there like you can anyways you can check it from youtube or any of your platform if you like aws go for aws if you like sap go for sap or uh, if it is for microsoft go for microsoft everything is available online 